everybody. Hello, hello, here from New York. Uh, I would like to share with you a little bit of Pasha. Let me make sure I uh, use my condition here of the, of uh, whatever I got, camera I got, uh, to make sure I share with you this beautiful Pasha of Kelushim. We are uh, here in New York City. What a privilege to be in this amazing city. A city that never sleeps. I saw a few people sleeping last night, but that's okay. So anyway, there is few, many mitzvot in the old book of Vaikra, but in Gdoshim there is a lot of mitzvot, a lot of precepts that has to do about between human beings. And as we know from Kabbalah point of view, um, there is two levels of relationship. One level is between you and the Creator, and one, another level is between you and, and other people. And uh, if a person wants to develop themselves, they cannot just work on the idea between them and the Creator because there's no development there. You cannot develop yourself in the area between you and God because everything is set. Like Tim Tumal, if everything is perfect, meaning you cannot make Shabbat on Wednesday. Shabbat is on Saturday. Uh, you cannot do Rosh Hashanah on Shavuot or Rosh Hashanah. Meaning the setting between the relationship between God and us is setting. So it, we cannot add or remove something from it. Those type of mitzvot is between you and the Creator. And hopefully we're doing well in that area. Then there is another area which is more unlimited. And the area where it's unlimited is the area of the mitzvot ben adam lechavero. It's the mitzvot between us and another human being. So one of the mitzvot that the Zohar talk about in this week parasha Talin pulat sahir. You should not let the person who work for you work for no money. What does that mean? So the Zohar go like this. Bore, come and behold. Misha lokech scharo shala ani. Whoever take the reward of the poor person, because if you, somebody work for you, he's poor until he's getting paid. She's poor until she's getting paid. Yeah? Nefeshan shebeto, uin itet nafsham. Okay? Whoever take the rewarding of his own people, what is this? Anshe Beite, you know, the people of his house. I mean, why would you take the money away from the people of, of, of your house, those are your children, your wife? Why would you do that? Or if it's a wife working hard and the husband is at home, so why would you take it away from them? So, it said that God make that individual's life short just because he didn't pay to his worker, or he didn't take care of his people who lived with him. Which means that so all those words of the people who complain about that individual go in front of God. And God is checking if that person really had the opportunity to pay the what you need to pay for that worker, or what you need to take care of his family, because one of the things to practice love the neighbor is thyself, is when you sustain your family. What do you think you do with your kids? You sustain them. That's love the neighbor of thyself. What do you think you're doing with your husband or your wife? Love the neighbor of thyself. That's always practice. The family is the practice where love the neighbor of thyself. Going, going out and having a good time with friends, it's good, but the true commitment is when you live with the same people, eating with them, uh, same shower, same bathroom, you know, all of those things help us to practice love the neighbor of thyself, and you always can add more. It's not like the relationship between you and God, and you cannot add a lot. <clears throat> so you say, So if that person is supposed to have a good time, say the Zohar, those thing that's supposed to be good in that individual's life will be taken away from me. The Lord, not only that, and also, when it's time for the soul to go to a highest level, it doesn't go. May God save you, save us from them, and from their inside. And what about if a rich person work for you? As the Zohar. Let's say you have a billionaire working for you. He just decided to work for you. Asur la'alim 
you're not allowed to hold his payment, his paycheck uh, before before the Shabbat. That's why the mitzvah, the that the oraita, the Torah mitzvah, you know, beyomo titen scharo, beyomo bet titen taf scharo shein. So we have Shabbat. That's why before Shabbat you have to pay your work. You cannot let your workers go home without money. How are they going to eat challah? How are they going to buy a bottle of wine? If you don't feel the pain of your people around you, if you don't feel that they don't have water or bread or, or, or whatever they need, then you are acting like Edom. As I mentioned yesterday in my Instagram page, Edom didn't let the Israelites, the Jewish people, go to their land and give them water. Even if the Jewish people decide to pay for the water, they say no. That's the roots of anti-Semitism. It still exists. Still exists, you know. Still exists, you know. It's, it's a big problem. If you see in your neighborhood somebody with yarmulke walking around and there is no water, chase them to give them a bottle of water. Do what God commands you to do. It's very important. So he say, "Afilo Ashir." That's the amazing thing. If it's the person who works for you is rich, it's not about the money you're giving them because they need your money. It's more than that. It's for you. He loves and he loves you. 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 He you. He you. Left it with me because when somebody worked for you, he give you a picadon. He give you uh, uh, almost like when you put in a bank account, you give a picadon. You give something to 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 leave you. Collateral. You give collateral. That's called picadon. Collateral is picadon. So when you give the collateral to to the uh, person you're working for, you expect him to give you money. What if the person say, I don't want your money. I don't want your money. He said to you, I don't want the money. Lo I don't want the money. Amara Picadon shel gufcha en ra'uy lafkid biyadi. He said, the Picadon, the collateral of your uh, body, you're not supposed to uh, uh, put it in, in, in my, my hand. Of course, the collateral of your soul, I'm not going to have it. Because only God holding the collateral of the nefesh, of the soul. What we learn from it is somebody, people who have people working for them, you have to take it as they give you their body. Their body depends on you now when you're paying them. So when you're paying the money, you have to be responsible for their life. You have to be sensitive to make sure they have food on the table. שקדו בידך אף כן רוחי אמר רבי חייה בידי אחר האם מותר אמר לו אפילו בידיו אחר שכבר נתנו. So it say שקדו בידך אף כן רוחי when it's written I will give the collateral of my soul to God אמר רבי חייה זה רבי חייה ובידי אחר and what with another human being with another person is this allowed? אמר לו אפילו בידיו אחר שכבר נתן לו. And tell us, I'm trying to read it in the Amik, it's not so clear in the Hebrew. אמר רבי חייהו בידה דאח רשרה. אמר לו אפילו ביד דפטרי אב דכתיב לא תלם. לא תבוא עליו השמש. So he say, what does that mean by another person? שואל, לא תלם פעולת שכיר. The, the, the Pasha, this week Pasha say, you should not let somebody who work for you not getting paid. It's even say, the sun should not have sunset until he get paid. Because every day that we are alive, there is a, a, a day, a spiritual day, who's corresponding for that day. And if you don't get if you don't pay the people who work for you, like you damage that day. Which day? The spiritual day. That's why the same day you have to pay. And the sun should not come on him.
משום שאין נפש עולה למעלה בנפשו של העני ושל אנשי ביתו עולה, לא תעשה כמו שאמרנו. So you have to be careful, if somebody works for you and they don't have money, you have to check. You have to check that they get the all uh, benefit that you got to do. What if you forgot? What if you don't remember? Then you give him extra. Let's say if you're supposed to pay him $200, you give him $220. You add more, be large. Be large when you're giving of your money, then you should expect being large or receiving amount of money. But if you're always thinking small, then the energy around you is small. It doesn't mean to waste money. It doesn't mean just to throw money to show off that you have money. That's not what I'm talking about. You have to go by the big spot. What, what God commands you. If God commands you, you have to pay before Shabbat, you know, before 1, 1 p.m. You have, to, you have to make sure they get paid. You know, the people who work for you got to get paid before the Shabbat. And then it's called Beomo, Titan uh, Schor. So it's a, it's a very, very important um, uh, to remember that. But there is another thing um, that, that I'm trying to share with you. Uh, we know that one of the things that we are now in is the Omer. And we know in a few weeks, you know, we're celebrating uh, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai Ilula. Or also celebrate the Kabi Mir Balanes, or also celebrating Pesach uh, Sheni. There's three things we celebrate. The Kabi Mir Balanes will be in the 14 days of Iyar, which is in 11 day. Then Pesach uh, Sheni will be in 12 days. Then Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai will be in 14 days, two weeks. And um, then we also have Shavuot. So make sure that in, in the time of the Omer, work on yourself, look inside and understand that every sphira of the counting means something. For example, we are now in the week of Tiferet. Tiferet called by the Kabbalists, also Rachamim, merciful. So think about people that you're not being merciful to. Uh, and, and if you think you cross the line, just apologize first. First, you have to apologize to make sure they forgive you. You know, I'll give you an example for, for yesterday. Uh, I had breakfast here in New York, I was extremely tired, and uh, we were sitting at the table, and I didn't like the, the food that much, and I pushed it to them and say, why don't you have it? But the way I say it was not right, and I didn't see it at that time that I was not speaking correctly, so what I did, I I called first thing in the morning, once I thought about it, I said, hey, listen, I want to apologize, I really want to apologize for the way I spoke to you. And the, and the person at the other end of the phone say, don't worry, I mean, you're walking for one and a half hour, you were tired, you were this and that. They seem to understand, which is very sweet. I mean, they didn't have to understand. It was my bad. It wasn't their bad. So it's, it's, it's a very important that to get into places in this week till the end of this week, to understand how we can be more merciful. Next week is Netzach, is, is has to do with eternity. And the idea of eternity, eternity is usually the week that you connect more to the Creator, to God, to the endless, to understand that whatever has an endless concept, that's what you want to connect to. Whatever has an end concept, like the body consciousness, it's okay. I mean, you need to connect to it. You need to take care of the body too. So till then, hopefully we talk soon. Don't forget to watch uh, some of my video on vital transformation, as that's really going to put you in a, in a better, uh, better place. All the best and you have a beautiful day.